Okay, so we've boiled these equations down, and we can think of these as uh, looking at differences between a predicted value and a uh, measured value from an experiment. So we're going to look at this geometrically now and see how we can visualize this. So we're going to look at the situation where we have 2D. So we have an X and a Y measurement each time that we do the experiment, and then a Z outcome or a Z response. So we've got three variables. X and Y are the independent variables, and Z is the response. So geometrically, we can look at this. So we have these red dots are these measurements. Each has a coordinate, X, Y, and Z. During the experiment, you set the X and the Y, and then you measure the Z, and you can graph these things. The model predicts that is going to be a uh, linear relationship. So in 3D, that'll give us a plane. And we want to figure out the slopes for the plane that will give us the best fit. So we have this plane. And given that there's errors in here, we want to know which plane will give us the best. We can think of the, the error here is the vertical distance. So it's the distance up and down uh, in the Z direction away from the plane. And if we add up those, um, those measurements or those distances up and down, what we're trying to do is we square that and we add the squares of those distances and we want to make that sum of the squares of those distances as small as possible. And the plane that will minimize those distances is going to be our linear least squares best fit. All right, so now uh, going back to that situation where we had the derivatives. Right, so I had the derivative of, oops, this is the log of the probability with respect to the first slope. This would be the equation I get when I go through and do that. If I take the derivative with respect to the second slope of the log of the probability, this is the equation I would have gotten for that. And I can do this all the way down and keep going. And if I, this is going to be the derivative with respect to the intercept of the log of the probability. So now this is my system of equations. So what do I have? I've got L plus 1 unknowns. And I've got L plus 1 equations. So ideally, hopefully, if everything goes well, so what do I have? I have uh, L plus 1 unknowns, L plus 1 equations. And if everything went smoothly and went right, hopefully I can solve. Right? And, notice, and the thing here is to notice is that this is actually a linear system of equations. It's linear because I know that number, I know that number, I know all of these numbers. The only thing I don't know are the m's, right? And the, none of the m's are being multiplied by one another or the b's. And so this is going to be linear if I multiply that through and expand everything out. Okay. Uh, now this is kind of confusing, kind of, um, right? So this is nasty. But there's another way to think about this. And I'm going to set this up and then finish it off in another video. Right. If everything was perfect, right? if my measurements were exact and I got the exact values for these slopes, then right, in my first equation, suppose this was in 2D, I would have found Z1 is equal to M1, X1 plus M2, oops, Y1. Right? This would have been an exact match. Right, and this is going to be, these are the slopes, these are the independent variables, and this is the output variable. Right? So if my model is exact, if the values for x and y I measured are exact, and I get an exact solution for z1, that would be right on. Same thing here. In 2D, I did my second experiment. So for the second value of x and the second value of y, I should get exactly the second value of z. And you keep this up. And then for the nth experiment, given the nth value for x, the nth value for y, I should have gotten the z sub n exactly right. 
So again, if everything was perfect, right, this is not really equal, but if everything was wonderful, then this system of equations I can now write as a uh, matrix system. And the thing to keep in mind, the things that are unknown are the M's and the B. Those are my unknowns. So if I set that in my vector x here, I'm going to call it p later, and now what am I, for this equation right here, I'm multiplying by x11, x21, x31, all the way down, and then I'm going to have plus 1 times b, that's equal to z1. This second equation, I'm taking x12 times m1, so I get that times that, plus x2 m2. And if I take that times that, plus that times that, all the way down, then that's, oops, all the way down, that's going to give me my z2, and that's represented by that equation, and you do that all the way down. Now, here's the problem, is that this is not going to be exact. There's going to be errors that are made, and um, so that's going to be a problem. But also, notice... I'm assuming I've got in equations here, so I'm doing uh, a many, many, many experiments, and here I've got L plus 1 unknowns. So I'm assuming that I'm going to do many more experiments than I have unknowns, so there's many more rows here than columns, so it's going to be very unlikely that I can solve this and get a, syst uh, a consistent equation. Right? So this is very unlikely uh, to be consistent. All right, if there's any error in here, there's likely no way that I can solve this thing exactly. Okay, so the question now is, is how am I going to deal with that? Okay. So here's what I had. This is the system I had on the previous thing. This is not really equals, but I would really like it to be equal. So the way I'm thinking about this now is that this is a matrix A, this is some set of unknowns P, and this is some set of responses that I've got that I measured, and I want this to be true, or at least as close as possible. So given this wish, given that I wish that to be true, what am I going to do to make that the case? And the next video, we'll see what we do to solve for that.